I'm gonna make a cup of coffee so that this will hopefully be the most ridiculous video I've ever made. You know, there's the burner, there's the water. You just kind of put it on like that and you just turn it on like this and you got it going. It's going like that. I actually just heat up some of yesterday's stuff. Um, this is Jakob von Gunten by Robert Walser. This book was given to me as a gift by one of my friends in Chicago a while ago. Thank you for the book, Will. Hey, I can still make a thumbs up. Robert Walser has been called the clairvoyant of the small. And if you like the small, uh, try the Sears Roebuck and Company catalog of 1908. You're looking, maybe you're looking for a new pair of pearl and stag handle daggers. And, and you, the appointed clairvoyant of the small, surely have something interesting to say about this 10 row metallic wire hairbrush. Not to mention these steel balls that will never break. Gee, and now I've spilled the spindles everywhere. Let's get back to the book. Now there are myriad ways to underline in a book. Certain books you don't underline in because they're so fragile. Other ones are the book you were reading for high school and so you underlined because you wanted to make sure that you underlined every reference to like a cheetah or a front tooth or a, you know, a, 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 a someone's back or the, a car because you were writing a paper where you basically track every reference to a thing. and So you want to make sure you catch every reference to that thing so you can you know, make your little piece about the progress of the symbol. Like basically hand in that that line graph to your teacher who will appreciate the effort. Bunch of like page number lists like this. You know, and sometimes when you read a book and you're so you you revere it, you you are so you are so out of your depth because the thing is so much better than anything you've ever written or thought about writing. And you don't really underline it all except for maybe a couple of notes, you know, here and there because you just can't help yourself because you have to kiss the book and tell it you, you like it. Side note, speaking of kisses, Jakob von Gunten is a really good novel uh, for weird kiss propositions, but I won't spoil anything yet. No, I, I promise I won't spoil anything. Isn't it interesting that this is a novel that can have spoilers? You wouldn't think it. You know, having read some of these selected stories, but you know, having held off on the walk, because you know it's long and you want to kind of give it its due. Although now after Jakob von Gunten, maybe you feel like it may be time to just kind of give another long Walser thing its due. You, uh, you, you, you are, um, you are uh, lost the train of thought. Having read some Walser stories out of here, out of the selected stories, you uh, think of Walser as like not really too climactic a writer. Although the stories are climactic in a couple of ways. I don't know. I don't know why I wasn't expecting this one to have a climax. Maybe it was the way it proceeded for so long. No, what am I talking about? This is a very climactic writer. This is a writer who, um, I mean, you really get changed when you read a story of his, like this one. I need to read this story. I need to read this story many times. I guess you feel like you know, <clears throat> or I don't know why I'm using you. Why am I using you? Hey, isn't this cool? This this book, it looks the same outside the jacket that it does in the jacket. Um, but I feel like Robert Walser is very good at writing almost in spite of himself. Like maybe the character is saying that they would despise all of the normal things in fiction or find them trite or but they also love those things in fiction that they would find. Yeah, they, they, these characters are so contradictory that like a writer who seems to just be concerned with um, like circling around in a head or a, or, or, a, or a fairy tale setting eventually comes to some really satisfying and, and inevitable conclusion. So he's like doing all these amazing things that, that the best fiction does just because um, I think he can't help it because I think maybe he's too considerate of the reader and where the own, where his own imagine, imagination will take him. And also I think in the early days of his career, he may have been more sensitive to what space constraints can do to create a climax versus what they can do um, to, I don't know, influence tone or warp tone. But I am no scholar, okay? Susan Bernofsky is, is the one you want. You know, you, you, I, I spent a long time just looking at these fragments of paper and looking at what little the author had done on them.
that by the time I got back to Jakob von Gunten, which was actually a book that I received, I think it was like the second book by Walser I ever had, right after the selected stories. Um, by the time I got to this, I was like, well, man, this must be incredibly different because there's so much space allotted here. There's no way Walser can be the Walser I love uh, with all this space, although I should have known better than that because I'd, I'd checked out The Robber from the Chicago Public Library and um, that's, an, that's a case of where, like, all that space doesn't really change, like, the microscript tone. But back to underlining. Sometimes you underline in books because you feel like you may be writing some kind of essay about it or trying to give some account of some symbols you noticed, like, to your girlfriend or to your professor, um... Uh, I mean, if they're the same person, that's crazy for you. And a lot of times pages will get overlit, like your um, your scholarly, so to speak, notes will overlap with things that you just underlined because you, you, um, you, you're enjoying yourself or notes you make because you um, are making a diary entry in the margin. A lot of times you're just underlining, uh, you're just kind of annotating a meaning that you heard from your professor that you want to make sure you keep track of. Sometimes you make really facile notes that when you come back to the book later interrupt you because you think, oh my gosh, I'm so smart. I'm so, like, I'm so crazy smart because I read, you know, reading is ego boost that when I encounter these old notes, it distracts me and I think, shit, you know, am I actually getting dumber or was I dumb to begin with? Please, I mean, no notes are dumb. I mean, it's just, these are things you can think when you come across a marking in a book. Which brings us back to Jakob von Gunten. Um, I underlined in some red, some blue, some pencil, and some pen. And I did a lot of, like, professory check marks and hearts and stars and stuff and little lines in the margins. Maybe one of the reasons that I did that, and I started recording before I knew what I was going to talk about, of course, but maybe one of the reasons I did that was because I wanted to feel like a professor of the Benjamenta Institute, like actually like marking down things that I approved of and things that I thought well, Walser should obey, should obey and what he should disobey. You've got so many things to gratefully call your own when you're reading this book. One thing that's good about the introduction to the book that's written by Christopher Middleton, who translated a lot of the stories in the selected stories. I mean, really formidable translator, I guess. Um, is that it starts out with uh, like a life of Walser and then the rest that are the readings of the book are in the form of like almost bullet points here. I mean, at the end, they like aren't even complete sentences. It's like... Um, the, the uh, ghostly presence here of one of the oldest forms of European fiction. That, um, that, uh, that's like a fragment. I don't know. It was cool. I like that style of intro. Like, here's a little bit of life like you want. And then, you know, here's some things that, here's some notes, you know, just almost in, in no particular order about the book. This mention of murmuring by one of the principal characters of the book, and the I would say the by far the most admired character of the book. Um, actually, I mean, I guess Jakob admires himself. So there's like a lot of self-directed um, admiration, and there's a lot of discussion of pride in this book that goes like over my head because I need to read it again. But it's also very interesting because pride in connection with a style like Walser's, where he always talks about being humble, is very very interesting. Like, but this mention of murmuring from one of the most um, admir admired characters in the book felt was so important that I actually got out the highlighter. I also like this sentence. The primer doesn't say what sort of a mouth. What a luxuriance of raven hair. The, and la lastly, I don't want to give everything away because I want to give you the joy of like reading the actual book, which is really a pleasant experience because the margins, I mean, like they just are really like creamy and wide to hold. And the page thickness is like kind of nice. It's just like a nice production. And for once, the like stiffness of these nerves 
hasn't gotten on my nerves. Oh gosh. Um, th but this passage I really enjoyed. I mean, I, and I remember really delicately underlining in my Sharpie pen that happens to be blue ink, um, this part. You know, of course, the rich today there, the really starving people, is something that the, that the narrator comes back to again. That's not really a spoiler. It just comes back to it in thinking. Um, I say yes to every... It's true. I say yes to everything very easily. But I liked what Johann said, and it suited me. There was pride in what he said and sorrow. And, well, these two together, pride and sorrow, have a good sound. I like, of course, I've already said, I like the... Like, the appearance of pride in this book is almost paradoxical. But it's also not. Um, so, anyway. And I also liked You're a Tree Hung with Understanding. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and have a, have a good day of reading. Maybe another video on Jakob von Gunten um, very soon. I, like, I... That would be a great idea, right? Because it's such a good book. You'll enjoy whatever it is you're reading today. Um, you know, let me know what it is. If you make any good discoveries, make make a YouTube video about the discovery, and then everyone will know. <laughs>